Okay, so step four is um, perhaps the more a more um, complex of of the steps in the sense that we need to begin transforming our raw data into useful information to uh, um, calculate our that will be used to calculate our our least cost uh, alignment path. So <clears throat> as I mentioned. Um, you know, all of the data needs to be standardized. Um, essentially, our three raw data sets will need to be transformed and standardized in a way uh, that their values range from one to 10, uh, with 10 being least desirable um, for our scenario, optimal scenario, and one being most desirable. Um, so let's uh, go to ArcGIS Pro and begin working through each of the three raw data sets. So let me add our elevation data set as, an, as the beginning. So here we see we have elevation and it ranges from 947 feet to 8,492 feet. Now the elevation data set is already a, a raster data set. If we were to zoom in, you can start to see how it's pixelated. You see these little um, squares, essentially. Each square is 30 meters by 30 meters. In fact, you can measure it, um, you know, 30 meters width and um, 30 meters in height, roughly. Um, you can also uh, just right click on the source, go to properties and look at the raster information. And it'll tell you that the cell size is 30 uh, meters by 30 meters. Now, the um, all of the raster data we're going to be working with, including the the data that we'll be creating, we want in raster format, so continuous across the study area, and also of the same resolution of 30 by 30. So um, that's something just to keep in mind as we go through this. Now, I mentioned that elevation isn't uh, the data set that we, um, I mean, it's a good raw data set. It's interesting to look at, but ele elevation alone isn't very useful to um, inform kind of that cost efficiency scenario. What we're more interested in changes in elevation or slope. So we want to avoid areas, um, you know, in the transmission line, which have uh, very dramatic changes in elevation. So what I'm going to do here is um, create uh, derived slope from this elevation grid. So I'm going to go to analysis and pull up some of our tools here. And the tool I want to use is slope. And um, for all of these tools, uh, I recommend using the one that says um, in parentheses spatial analyst um, because that's the extension we're using. We don't need um, 3D analyst. Some of them are exactly the same, but uh, some of them add other uh, parameters that we don't need. So um, for slope or, you know, to drive changes in elevation, we can use this function. Our input raster is going to be elevation. Um, we want to make sure all of our data is going into the suitability layer. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, type in, uh, in all of these that we're deriving for our scenario one, I'm going to have a, a prefix of S1. Um, and for here, I'm just going to do slope. OK. And save that. So S1 slope. Um, here, the output measurement, uh, you have a couple options here. Percent rise or degree, I'm going to do degree of slope. And then just click Run. And this is going to, uh, by default, um, create a slope grid within our study area um, and with a 30 meter resolution. Um, and you can see the dark areas have the greatest slope and the lighter areas have um, uh, less slope. So in the uh, valley here, the slope is uh, quite low. Um, in like less than 1.72 for the lightest areas. Um, and these darker areas may even have like 45 degrees, 50 degrees slope, which 
again, would be difficult for construction. Um, zoom to layer here. So this is a now become a useful data set to us, but we have to again, uh, right now the values range from uh, you know under 1.72 degrees to under 90 degrees. Remember, we need to standardize all of our data um, to have them have a value of one to 10. Um, now in this case, greater slopes are um, uh, least desirable, less desirable. So we want the uh, the final, the highest category to be a value of 10, and the areas that are most desirable to have a value of, of one. Um, so that's what we're going to do next is essentially to um, use another tool called reclassify. So we're going to reclassify these values. Remember to use the spatial analyst tools. Um, and I'm going to reclassify this S1 slope. Uh, and we're going to reclassify the value field. And um, let me go to this um, classify option. And instead of manual interval, I'm going to do quanti uh, quantile interval. So they're all about uh, similar um, range. And then use 10 as my number of classes and click OK. So now I have 10 classes um, and the new values going from 1 to 10. And it makes logical sense here. Uh, the lower slopes have lower values, right? So they're most more desirable. And the higher slopes have higher values, meaning less desirable. One important thing here, in the final category, what I want you to do is kind of overestimate that. Um, in order to avoid some rounding errors that happen here, which can uh, uh, generate some errors in your results. I'm just going to type in a 90 um, for that final category. And be sure to, when you do this, don't just change it and then um, uh, run. You have to um, change it and then click Enter um, to be sure that it uh, is recognized by ArcGIS Pro. It's kind of a bug. Um, but once you do that, make sure you have no more than 10 categories and the values are from 1 to 10. And it makes sense logically that um, lower values are more desirable. Then you can just click, oh, before we do that, let me make sure we have follow our standard naming convention here. So I'm going to say S1 and then reclass, reclass slope. Um, and I'm saving this in that suitability layers. Um, File Geo Database, I'm going to save and run. And it will create a new layer here, values of 1 to 10 um, in terms of whether it's desirable or not. I can also um, change the symbology here to make it uh, make a little bit more sense visually. Um, so instead of this unique value color scheme, I'm going to give it a monochromatic color scheme. Um, maybe something like this. So um, areas that are in red, the darker red, are least desirable, and the lighter colors are more desirable. And then our values are from 1 to 10. So that's it that's um now we have one of our data sets uh for the input into our optimal um uh cumulative cost grid but we need two additional ones and remember in my um in my uh scenario i said i was going to use distance to roads and then fire hazard so let's move on to distance to roads so i'm going to go back to my um data and add roads add to current map and our roads data um, I'm going to turn off this one so we can see it a little better we have highways in these darker red and then the yellows are just kind of major roads and um, I'm thinking as I mentioned that it's probably good to have our transmission line be nearer to highways in this case. Um, so I want the um, 
to create a grid data set, a raster data set, that in some way represents distance to highways. So that's what I'm going to do here um, using a tool called distance accumulation. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is um, select only the highways because I don't want to get distance from the major roads. I want to really try to um, uh, encourage the program to uh, place the um, transmission line nearer to the roads. So let me um, go to map and then select by attributes. And we're going to do select roads based on the type. And type is equal to highway. And I can apply that. Um, and now we see our highways are selected. So when I run the distance function, it's only going to uh, calculate distance from the highways rather than all the major roads. So I go to geoprocessing, um, and I'm going to uh, type in distance. And what we want is this distance accumulation tool. And I want distance from our roads as our input. And you see how it, by default, uses only the selected records. So all these segments will be used um, and not all of the major roads. The output accumulation raster is, I'm going to type in our S1, so we know this is for scenario one, dist to roads, Oop, to roads, save. And there are a couple um, things we want to do here. Under environments, I want to make sure that the processing extent is just our study area. We don't need it to calculate distance outside our study area. We just need data for within it. And also for the raster analysis, we want to make sure that the cell size is um, similar to the our other uh, data layers, such as slope, which are 30 meters. You can either type in 30 here, or you could um, just select one of the existing ones, which are 30 meters, um, such as our uh, elevation or slope grids and go back to parameters and everything looks good here I'm gonna run it so now it's running our distance and let's see if this makes sense so you see where our roads are and you see this distance to roads and the screen is closer to our highways and as you get out further, like this white is much further. We have like um, like 36,000 meters away, right? So it looks like it worked pretty well. But again, it the value range is from zero to 36,000. Uh, remember that for all of our um, data sets, we need them to be standardized um, to have values between one and 10. This is really important. Um, when we start before we start combining the data together um, so what we need to do is run that same reclassification tool reclassify and this time we're reclassifying our distance to roads using the value field go ahead and classify and for this again we can click 10 classes and also, I do like to use the quantile so they have similar ranges for each class. I click OK here. Now, again, the default um, values, 1 to 10, they're in the right direction. We want, we are saying more desirable is to be near roads, right? So that's what we have here. Like 1 is the closest um, uh, quantile to the roads, whereas 10 is the least de desirable those that are furthest from the roads. Now, if you wanted to say, um, just as an example here, uh, maximize, say, public safety, and you wanted for some reason uh, to be further, you wanted to value um, the transmission line to be further from the roads, then you could just reverse the new values. And now you see how 10, um, which is the least desirable, is the closest to the roads, this is green areas, and one um, furthest from the roads, which are these, um, which are in this case would be the most desirable, and that would be these areas that are farther. But I do want uh, to, to um, value 
uh, place higher value on um, those that are closer. So I'm going to give that there. Um, and I'm going to reclass this, create using our standard kind of uh, naming convention. And um, our environment should be OK here. It's only going to calculate values for what we have. So we shouldn't need to set any, anything up in the environments. And just click Run. And you can see now we have 10 values. This um, default color scheme doesn't really communicate um, as well as a monochromatic would do. So let me um, do another monochromatic here with red. So we have red areas being least desirable, areas furthest from the highway, from the roads. Um, and more desirable are these areas that are lighter in color. So now we have two data sets. They have that standard um, 1 to 10, um, 1 to 10 um, value. We have the roads, and then we have the reclass of slope. And we're moving on now to fire hazard. So I'm going to go to my catalog and add fire hazard. Where is that? Right here add that to the current map. So there are a lot of files that you have to kind of manage as you go through. Um, and uh, so let me see a fire hazard, see what this looks like. Okay, now uh, with the, right now the uh, we have four categories of fire hazards going from very low to very high. Uh, the very low have a value of one and the very high have in the red here have a value of four. So that's going in the right direction um, in the sense that higher values are least desirable. They have a higher in magnitude. But again, it doesn't have a range of one to 10. It has a range of one to four. So we still need to reclassify this, even though it has four categories, into that one to 10 range. So we're going to go back, go to geoprocessing, uh, actually reclassify and we're going to reclassify this fire hazard data uh, using the values. Um, this time we can't do 10 because we only have five potential values. Um, oh, actually, I think I think it is a the, yeah the old value of five. Um, so the new values, um, we want to have the highest value to equal 10. And then the second highest, somewhere between 1 and 10, I'm going to give it an um, 8, a 6, and then a 1. So 1 would be very low fire risk. Uh, moderate would be given a, a signed a value of, of 6. You could give it a 4 or 5 if you wanted. Um, or a high value of 8, and then a very high value of 10. And that um, will give it that range of 1 to 10 um, that we need. I'm going to reclassify this. I mean, rename um, this um, with our standard naming convention of reclass and then fire hazard. Um, okay. And run it. And now we have our 16810, which makes sense. Um, we could, you know, change the symbology again to have it be monochromatic um, to make sure it's doing it properly. So we have areas that are light in color being um, very, uh, to be most desirable and the darkest areas being the least desirable. So now we have our three um, input data sets and you can see them here. Um, fire reclass of fire hazard, reclass of distance to roads, and reclass of slope. So that um, is what we needed to do for uh, our our step four of standardizing data sets.